the Young Turks 40 years. Welcome back. You're watching a special presentation from the 20th Wharton India Economic Forum 2016. Since its inception 20 years ago, Wharton India Economic Forum is one of the largest and most prestigious India-centric business conferences that brings together businesses, political leaders, professionals, academics and students from across the world to discuss India's evolution into a prominent global economic power and the challenges it still faces. The 20th Wharton India Economic Forum saw over 250 attendees and hosted speakers that discussed the prospects of India as an investment opportunity and the need for infrastructure and skill development in the country. Indian students are our largest international student body at the MBA and the undergraduate level and then if you include ethnic Indians, first and second generation migrants, uh, we have a palpable Indian presence on campus including among our faculty. So this uh, forum is really the pinnacle, it highlights the importance of India to the Wharton School. We also caught up with actor and philanthropist Kamal Hassan and spoke to him about this new mission to skill India, build India. You've always emphasized the fact that Skill India, Build India, and you're also the chairman of FIKI for Media and Entertainment Division. Uh, share with us some of your plans of skilling the industry. We have done a first basic run of recognition of prior learning okay. as um, um, whatever they have in the industry, skilled technicians. You sort of evaluate the skill and then according to the standards that we have set, which is actually international standard, raise them to that standard. Give them that kind of, impart that kind of training yeah. and see how many of them want to do it. And definitely uh, making way for newer skilled technicians who will who are not actually working technicians but want to work in future. The young workforce will be already skilled when they come here yeah. and sort of learning it on the job. The worst thing to learn soldiery is during battle. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take me through the numbers? How many people have you already skilled and uh, how many do you plan to do by end of this year? Our aim now in the first phase is about 39 to 40,000. With Chennai alone, we were able to garner something like 10,000. So I think 40,000 is not an easy number, but it's not impossible also. The highlight of the forum was the presentation that Keto and Kheti made to an audience of students, investors and entrepreneurs. The two winners also got some VC interest and were scrutinized by Krishna Kaluri, partner at New Enterprise Associates. What is the uh, um, check size that somebody... So the uh, average contribution size is uh, 3,000 rupees, uh, $50. Sure. Okay. Uh, and uh, the average campaign size of individuals raising money is around 30,000. And uh, what does the competitive landscape look like in India today for uh, this kind of... Uh, so uh, it's my fourth year in this space. Uh, it has been a tough ride. Uh, I've seen close to uh, 25 platforms come and go and shut down. Uh, three, four of them have survived. Uh, we are the largest players in India. The gap between us and our closest competitor is three times now, uh, with us spending or burning less than half of the money that they've burned. Um, it will get uh, a little more competitive as well. I see more people coming in this space. Uh, I also see there's a potential, if, if this space really grows, of big payment players looking at this space. They are looking at it. They've reached out to us, be a PTM, movie quick. They are looking at the space of how to get the whole P2P uh, uh, money transfer space going. Your business model is you pay, take a small piece of the transaction. Yes, so anything that moves through the system, we take a small, ten, uh, we take, keep a fee of whatever moves, that's 10%. Mm. Uh, we're also trying to drive more premium products, premium features uh, to our non-profit partners. So India has the largest number of non-profits in the world, 3.3 million non-profits registered in India. Uh, so non-profit uh, is 50% of our business and non-profits fundraise throughout the year. So we're providing them right tools, uh, right features for them not only to raise money but even manage, service and retain their donors and their funders. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, uh, a B2B play as well where we're an enterprise solution is what we call it. We're going to launch soon uh, which basically will help them manage the whole uh, funding base. Yeah, I'm reminded of you know the whole microfinance space that sure. a few years back was a rage. Sure. And uh, they had to deal with the 
adverse reaction to sure. some of the same things. So something you might have to think about. With microfinance, the thing was that you, here you had these microfinance players who were charging more than what the market rate was. Of course, they were charging into people who could not, did not have access to finance. So that's a different question all to get on. But here you had banks giving loans at 15, 20%, and here you had these guys, microfinance guys, who were charging 25, 30, 35%. And that, and that played a, when, when it, you know, when, when it broke out as a PR story, it came out in a very negative light that hey, you know, all these guys, they have no money and you're charging them 35%, which is ridiculous uh, when it comes to raising money. Uh, with us, it's more of the fact that uh, the cost of raising money today offline in India is so high, it's f in, no, individuals, non-profits pay anywhere to 45 to 60, 65, 70% uh, in terms of raising money. And here's somebody who's doing it at, you know, 10%. The Young Turks 40 years.